Hello, everyone. Welcome to our new episode of The Three Whisketeers, the show that likes to share our whiskey and have a lot of fun. Now, I'm Jamie. I'm your host. Mr. Angel here in Hipster Curtis. We have his sunburn is right behind the camera, and we have our happy Honduran rocking the mic, uh, rock DJ style, Eddie. Oh, that's my mechanic form. Play Robot. Oh, okay. Switching the cards. Shuffling. Shuffling some decks. Now, Curtis, we have oh, so something I've like never heard of behind the unveiling here. I don't know anything about it. You'll have to tell us the story. And I know nothing, anything about it, but I'll tell you the story. I know right. nothing, tell us anything. Story. Yeah. Oh, um, my son and I went over to East Dubuque to pick up uh, some Japanese whiskey for the show that we did with Courtney. Mm -hmm. And... Um, and while I was there, a gentleman came up and spoke to me, and he was an eye whiskey chick. His name was Tony, and he recommended this bottle. I've done no research on it. I know nothing about it. I just wanted to taste it blind and see what I thought. That's very interesting. Should we reveal it? This is all new to us, then. Whoa, yeah. Agent Orange over I, here. I've never, I've never had, never had this. Don't know anything. I didn't look up any of the history. Nothing. Okay, it says here. Um, Horse name, Bourbon Country. Okay, I guess they're just talking about this horse. This is called Pinhook Straight Bourbon Whiskey. 47.7% fall of 2018. Hand bottled in Frankfurt, Kentucky. Uh, aged three years or more for a new charred oak barrels. So they meet the criteria for bourbon. Well, that's what says bourbon on it, right? Well, I guess so. Yeah. Distilled in Lawrenceburg, Indiana. Okay, so this is another one that came Let's from see. Lawrenceburg and then was finished. In finished in Kentucky. Yeah. Now, the Iowa Whiskey Chasers, they... It's a pretty good Facebook page. I enjoy watching all their posts and, yeah, and uh, following what they do. Yeah. Um, well, when he recommended this, I thought, well, you know, we talked a while. He said he had about 250 bottles in his collection. I have about 250 bottles in my collection. Well, I thought he well, might just... He might just have a good idea what good whiskey is. We're not comparing or anything. So, um... What if he has 250 bottles of Jack Daniels? <laughs> <laughs> Tony, we're joking, buddy. We're just messing around, fool. Yeah, that Dale Carnegie course really paid off for you. <laughs> <laughs> Dude. Uh, to the nose. Vanilla. It's like vanilla, yes. Very vanilla to the nose. The color is out of the bottle. I think the orange really changed the color on top of the bottle, don't you, Eddie? I think that there's a reason why they put an orange thing right here, because this is like a different color for bourbon. It's very yellowish. I, I would say it's like a like a light, light orange. Amber. Looks yeah. like apple juice. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it doesn't smell like apple juice. Yeah, no. but it's very vanilla, like you said. It doesn't have a harsh alcohol no, not at all. What is the proof on this guy? But it's almost like a cotton candy. I think it's almost like a cotton candy. Okay. Also. Yeah, there is a sweetness in the nose. Mm hmm Straight bourbon whiskey. Okay. Really? Okay, let me taste it now. Now, this is aged three years or more, so it should have that twang that I lack. At first, it, heat. it seems like it's missing something, and then it kind of unfolds on the palate in a unique way. Yeah. That's from my first taste. It kind of tastes like it's maybe needed to be aged a little longer, but then it kind of undergoes some interesting changes. So in the beginning, I got very little. Mm -hmm. And then I think what you're saying is that it kind of comes out. It opens up. Towards the end, yeah. Mm -hmm. I got that too. Yeah, but it, initially when it enters the palate, I'm getting uh, cut grass. Cut grass? Cut grass, I get that, but it was more like an apple crisp. You mm -hmm. ever had an apple crisp that's warm? Yeah. I mean, un except for the crunchiness. <laughs> And then it gets a little grassy in there, just open up, and it goes, cha -cha -cha! and then boom, it's good. Cha -cha -cha -cha. Yeah, that's that's they write about that in all the bourbon books. Hey, so got the vocab, okay? Bill <laughs> <laughs> Murray had that in his uh, whiskey bible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's in the glossary it's of terms. An index, index, yeah. And what a, what's the price point on something like this? I have no idea. I don't remember. I just bought it. It wasn't inexpensive, but it wasn't unreasonable. It, it was like 45 50 I want to say 40 to $60. i am thinking 60, probably yeah. 45 though. Okay. Between 40 and 60 is very good. I think Tony get, turned this on to a decent whiskey. Yeah, good job, Tony. Yeah. I'm interested, Thank you, Tony. I'm interested in seeing what the others are like because there were some other colors I remember. There was a yeah, green yeah, one. Yeah, there were several others. Oh, maybe they were, identify it that way, then. Yeah, I think there was a green one. There was a blue one, I think. With the wax? Uh, yeah. I think 
think the wax was a different color too. Yeah. Yeah, it oh, should really? be. Huh? That makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. Do you think they had rye? That's kind of I'm, one of them I'm sure rye. one of them was a rye. I, I think it might have been a green rye. one. Yeah. Like, I like do, it. We, do we have any other notes that we want to talk about with this? I don't know. I think it's short nice. and sweet. But no, if, if, if you meet an Iowa whiskey chaser and he's got an opinion, maybe you should listen. Yeah, yeah and I do, and I have. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, we will show everybody where the... Uh, we'll chase the uh, subscribe button. We're Kablam! Still, bam! That's our coup de call for the... All for one. One, one for, for all. all. <laughs>